how are you? I'm doing good. How are you doing, Allison? I'm doing very well, thanks. So, a hundred years your dad would have been, right? Yeah, yeah. What do you, uh, what do you think he would? What do you think he would say about all this? Um, well, you know, my father did something that was always sort of humorous uh, right around the next generation towards the end of his life. So we're talking the late 80s. And uh, he would go out to a convention and he'd go up on stage and he would fold his arms and look around the room with a little bit of a smirk and say, yep, just the way I planned it. And, <laughs> and I think that was his humble way of saying, how the hell did this happen? <laughs> Um, you know, as we all know, Star Trek was uh, essentially a failure. It came out in uh, 66. I mean, the, the, the first pilot was, was, wasn't even shown, um, mm -hmm. but he was given the, the right to do another pilot. And they fought every year to keep that thing on the air. And it just, it, it was only getting the young kids. It really mm -hmm. wasn't getting the, the mass audience. And it was only in syndication in the 70s that the young kids who were living in the world of Vietnam and, and, and tons of social injustices uh, said, you know what, that, that's, that's a great future. We believe in that future too. We want to live in it. And they're the ones who, who made Star Trek what it is today. It's incredible. I mean, there's been spin-offs, there's been movies, there's been, I mean, merchandising galore. Do you think he ever imagined this when he, started this little idea of a show? The short answer is no. The long answer <laughs> is, you know, my, my father had an incredible life before Star Trek. You know, mm. he, he was a bomber pilot in World War II and flew uh, 80 some odd missions in the South Pacific. Uh, he then became a transcontinental pilot for Pan American Airways and flew from New York to Johannesburg. And then wow. doing um, a uh, deadheading flight, he was deadheading, the, the plane crashed in the Syrian desert. Oh. And he was one of a few survivors. He then became a sergeant or ra rose to the rank of sergeant with the LAPD and was writing speeches for the chief of police. And then, you know, he <laughs> saw this thing called television and they were doing a lot of cop dramas and buying stories. And, and that was his doorway in. But the point of all that was he had sort of really seen the, the, the worst that humanity had the op to offer. Mm -hmm. And I think the best, I mean, he had tremendous perspective and he was uh, a futurist. He was ahead of his time. Um, he knew that if we could let our better selves come out and succeed, mm -hmm. that we could be an incredible species one day. And that's what he wrote about. What do you think he would say about things that are going on nowadays? Well, you know, the reason why we're doing this, uh, the celebration, is not to yeah. celebrate a man who's been, I mean, sad to say, gone for 20 some odd years. Um, it is really the ideas behind him and behind Star Trek that we're really trying to get out there. And at the same time, as a son, I'm trying to celebrate my father. But, yeah. you know, in the 60s, Star Trek had a lot to say. Star Trek right. painted that beautiful future where we no longer feared difference and change. In fact, we, we craved it, we thirsted, it. we knew that's how we could evolve intellectually as a species. That's the only way we can evolve intellectually as a species. And sadly, that message is just as true and necessary today. Um, I do think we have made some progress in that area, uh, but we still have a long way to go. We and uh, again, this is why we're doing this. Again, not to celebrate a man who's been gone for this long, but to celebrate the ideas he had, the forward thinking, and how we should all be thinking about our future. So let's talk about the celebration. You've had speakers, you've had, you got merchandise that's going for a really fantastic cause. So everybody out there should go to the website campaign, and buy yes. some merch. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Um, so when did you start thinking about this celebration? What did you want it to become? Did it become what it what you had hoped, especially with COVID? Uh, well, and, and, you, and you hit the nail on the head there. Uh, we thought about it many, many years ago, and and you know we really didn't know. I should say I didn't really know how I wanted to do this. You know, some big Hollywood gala. I it didn't really seem right to only do that. I mean, it's really the the fans, the people who love Star Trek that that 
deserve the celebration to honor them as well as my father. Um, COVID has made things, of course, very difficult. Uh, we did have bigger plans this year, but with the new Delta variant, we've unfortunately had to cancel uh, some of our bigger items, which we hope to do next year. And we're, we're just going to say, everyone, we need you to time shift your life just a bit and, and, and we'll do a redo on the 100th. But uh, we are going to Las Vegas where the Star Trek convention is happening. Nice. Uh, even though the Delta variant is there, I mean, of course, I'm vaccinated. We're all vaccinated. Yeah. Nothing is a sure thing. There are break, breakthrough infections. And of course, spreading it to those who have not been vaccinated is an issue. Uh, yeah. It is a risk that I am taking by going. Um, but we're going to be as conscious and, and, and safe as we can. Um, we're going to be celebrating his, his birthday with the fans there. Um, we've been doing this uh, Quoting Gene Roddenberry campaign, which we found uh, 100 quotes of my father, which I, I, I loved reading through. They're, they're quite, I mean, some of them are simple, but kind of, some of them are just so in-depth and beautiful. We did a podcast called Quoting Gene Roddenberry, which I highly recommend. Uh, people check out. We also got celebrities every day up until his birthday on August 19th. We've had a celebrity read a quote. And, you know, the, the, the important part is in these podcasts, we dive deep into them. Mm -hmm. And what did they mean when my father said them? And what do they mean today? And are they relevant? And it, it has been a, a true treat to hear our two great hosts and the guests they have on talk about them. And, and it gets into social issues and, and the relevance back then today and things that we need to sort of uh, uh, focus on. So it's been, a, it's been a real privilege to, to be a part of that and get that out there. What, for you, you know, you have a, a different view on everything with the fans and all. So for you, what do the fans mean? Even to this day, they're still, I mean, I have a brother who's a fan. I, you know, he was very excited about this interview, I have to tell you. So <laughs> um, what is that like for you? Because he was your father, you know? You have, must have a very different viewpoint, well, I, obviously. Sure, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm glad you asked that. I, I, I did a documentary uh, that came out back in 2011, 2012 called Trek Nation. And it was a 10 year journey to sort of understand who my father was and the man behind the myth and, and a son coming to terms and understanding hmm. um, who who his father was. You know, I grew up with my father being the great bird of the galaxy, this visionary, this genius. And it's somewhat difficult for a son or anyone for that matter to identify or connect with someone who's placed so high up on the pedestal. So in the documentary, uh, the people that I wanted to talk to were the people that could speak about him as a person. Mm. And, 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 and all the way through. So it was everything from fans to relatives to other luminaries in the industry to Hollywood people. And then we found some unique people, athletes, people that worked Ooh. in science, uh, teachers, uh, doctors. And it, it was really great to get this spectrum of people who admired Star Trek and admired my father and found this commonality, this beauty in this future where we all live and work and love one another unconditionally. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, it, it, it's been incredible to do that. And it's incredible today to talk to fans and have them share their stories about how Star Trek inspired them. And it could be a tiny inspiration or it could be a life-changing one. And there are very few, not none, but there are very few shows out there, especially sci-fi shows that can say that. And again, that's why yeah. we're trying to make a big deal out of this. This Star Trek has a message. It said a lot yeah. to people and inspired people and it did good in the 60s and it's done it all the way up today and we wanna keep it going. And so you should, because it really does have a wonderful message and we do still need it today and celebrating your father on any year, but certainly what would have been his 100th birthday, you know, is phenomenal. So thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. And we look forward to getting more of this celebration. See, we get to expand the celebration thanks to COVID. So we're exactly. just gonna go with it that way, right? <laughs> exactly, yeah. And I ask anyone out there on social media, we've got a Think Trek campaign if yeah. you see a cloud in the sky that looks like the Enterprise or a shape that looks like the Star Trek insignia or anything out there, 
that reminds you of Star Trek, take a picture of it and put the hashtag Think Trek. Um, yes, we want it to be fun. We want it to be engaging. There's a lot of fun pictures on there. But behind all that, we want people to think of Star Trek and the ideas behind it. Fantastic. Thank you again so much for your time. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Ha <laughs> ha!